Joel Embiid has been on an absolute tear as of late, just to cap off an already amazing season that he has been having. While the Philadelphia 76ers have been up and down and now up again, the constant that has existed for them throughout the entirety of this season has been Joel Embiid's utter dominance. Over the last four games, Joel Embiid has had 50 points, 40 points, 38 points, and 42 points. His dominance this year has managed to actually somehow go under the radar, and because of this stretch that he has been having recently, he's actually starting to get the proper attention that he deserves and the MVP hype that he deserves. But that's not really what this video is about, even though I do intend on talking about Embiid and specifically specifically the changes that he's made to his game that has made him be so much better this year. But I also want to talk about how him being as good as he is right now should affect the decision making of the Sixers front office, particularly as it pertains to Ben Simmons. So this is kind of a Ben Simmons video, but it's also a Joel Embiid video. I realize that we are all universally exhausted of Ben Simmons as a topic, but this is a conversation that is worth having, not because of Ben himself, but because of the season that Embiid is having. How good Embiid has been playing has made Daryl Morey's approach to moving on from Ben Simmons particularly frustrating, and I wanted to talk about that, and again, about just how good Embiid has been. So basically, let's just talk about the Sixers. Roll the intro. So I finally hit 200k subscribers, thank you very much for that, and I don't mean to say finally in a way that uh, suggests that I'm unappreciative, it's just that this last thousand has literally taken longer to get than it's taken me to gain a thousand subs and maybe the entirety of my channel since hitting 100k, so it's just been a little frustrating how long that has taken, but we're finally here. And now my goal for the end of this year is to hit 300,000 subscribers. So if you are new here, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Also drop a like, only takes one second and it makes a massive difference. Real quick, I do wanna say in this intro that there is one scenario that has been floated around as of late on NBA Twitter and the moves of the Sixers seems to suggest that there is some validity to these claims. And if these things are true, then it does kind of discount the point of this video. What I am talking about is that James Harden rumor you may have been seeing. I talked about it over on my second channel in the video I uploaded before this one over there. And if Ben for Harden is a genuinely real possibility, then basically ignore the take in this video. As I mentioned, I talked about the Harden stuff over on my second channel, so if you want to see my thoughts on that more in depth, then go check that out over there. Also, I do want to say, if that does happen, retroactively, my James Harden for Ben Simmons is inevitable video from like years ago, over two years ago before the Harden trade even happened. It'd just, it'd just be funny if that actually ended up happening. It was inevitable, we just didn't even realize it. All right, I thought it was and then it wasn't, but then it was again. Anyways, let's talk about Joel and Embiid. Joel this year is averaging 29 points, 11 rebounds, and 4 assists on 61% true shooting while anchoring the 11th best defense in the league that has no meaningful defender on the roster besides for Joel outside of Matisse Thibel and, well, uh, Ben Simmons, but he's of course not playing. Joel is having one of those seasons a superstar has when his talent around him is not all that amazing, where he's just kind of the best at almost every aspect of the game on his team. Like he leads them in almost every category because he's that good and the rest of the roster is just that okay. And this of course is not new for Joel Embiid to be dominant, but it's been different as of late and there's really been two major changes to his game that has allowed it to be so different, but still so dominant. These substantial changes have really shown themselves in his recent run and that is really just the guard skills that Embiid has flashed in moments in games before, something that he would do every once in a while. That's really been a prominent part of his game this year. Taking the ball up the floor, pull-ups off of the dribble, he's just making quicker, more skillful moves that push him outside of the confines of his traditional mold as a traditional center. And I think this has kind of come in the lack of Ben Simmons on the roster, 
like it's just made Embiid have to do a little bit more and where that also extends is in the playmaking department and it's kind of a positive of Ben being gone not in the playmaking in general because the playmaking for the team would just simply be better if Ben Simmons was there versus not but this has basically forced Joel Embiid to be a more concise decision maker and for the Sixers to rely upon him to be a playmaker more than they ever have before. Joel Embiid has shown flashes of being a very capable passer before, but it's never really been something that the Sixers actively tried to utilize. It's more and more as the season goes along becoming something that they're trying to utilize, and I feel like there's another step for it to go before Embiid's like a six assists per game guy. Of course, I swear to God, people are going to take that and be like, well, he's basically Jokic then. No, because there's a huge difference in, the, in playmaking besides for assists per game, but Joel Embiid's passing has always been something I felt was underutilized, and now in the absence of Ben Simmons, it is being utilized more and more as the season progresses, and I like seeing that. Joel Embiid feels as though he is peaking right now, and the Sixers, because this team is pretty lacking in talent excluding Joel, well, they're kind of whatever. Tobias Harris has been the definition of mediocrity this year, Tyrese Maxey and Seth Curry have been bright spots, Thibel is great on one side and not on the other, Danny Green and Georges Niang have been cool, Andre Drummond's a serviceable backup center, like, the roster isn't bad, but there is no star player on this roster at outside of Joel Embiid, and then again, Ben Simmons, but he's not really here. Now, some of you might interject here and say, well, this is the perfect time for Ben Simmons to come along, but as I mentioned earlier, part of the reason Joel Embiid has been who he's been this year, and part of the reason the Sixers have been how they have been, has been an absence of Ben Simmons, for better or for worse. The positive changes that this team has made are kinda gonna get thrown out of the window if Ben Simmons returns. Now. They might be better overall, but they're gonna be back to what they were before. And I think instead it would be better to take the positive change you have now and then add a talent upgrade on top of it that fits the positive changes you've made rather than going back to the old thing. On top of the fact that uh, him actually playing again is probably unlikely anyway, so not really something to bank on. A big part of Embiid's dominance and his ability to do more of his guard stuff and his ability to dominate in the paint has been because of the spacing, and Ben Simmons brings a lot of things, one of them is obviously not spacing. But the way the Sixers play is right in tune for a ball handling star of some kind, whether that be Tyrese Halliburton who appears to be on the table, or James Harden or someone else. And with how Embiid is playing this year, as far as I'm concerned, there is no excuse to not make a Ben trade to get the roster to the point where they can genuinely contend. One star player, while while maintaining your depth around Joel Embiid is enough to compete for a championship and Ben Simmons is valuable enough to trade for said star caliber player. Tyrese Halliburton, since he's been getting the opportunity, has been like a 20 and 10 guard on great efficiency. I believe that's what he is. I believe he can maintain that and I believe he would do that fine in Philadelphia. And that's a star caliber guard. I realize it's crazy that Tyrese is already that this early, but if that kind of guy is right next to Embiid, I think already they're encroaching in the contender category. I realize some people don't think you can get that kind of guy out of a Ben Simmons trade, but you're undervaluing how good Ben Simmons is and what his trade value is. I realize we've talked about Ben Simmons trade value for so fucking long that no one has any idea what it is, but some people have brought it down to the point where it's like Kelly Olenek and Jeremy Grant. No. So trade Ben Simmons for a star caliber guard at the deadline. That's something that appears to be on the table. At the very least, fill out the team with more role players, like something. Something to juice this roster. It's, to me, inexcusable to not do that unless that James Harden idea is truly on the table. If that's really a very genuinely real possibility and not pie in the sky, then at that point, it is worth waiting the 10 months and wasting this one year. But Joel Embiid is 27 years old. He has a ton of lower body injury history, and he is a big man. And that has a disastrous track record with big men throughout history. So maybe Joel Embiid is just a shell of his former self at 30. That's a genuinely real possibility. And if that's the case, you don't want to waste one of the last three years of Joel Embiid being this type of guy on trying to get an extra first round pick out of a Ben Simmons deal. Let's not be petty here, and especially 
waste something amazing here that Joel Embiid is contributing. Again, if a James Harden trade is on the table, it's worth that weight. But anything else, if you're not getting anything close to that anyways, please just do it now. Please do not hold out. It's not worth it. And it's wasting a year of a player's prime. And none of us like seeing that. Shout out to Rudy for editing this video. But that's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And keep the music.